Hey folks, my guest today is Elio Narciso. He's building a tool called ScaleStack.io. He's passionate about technology and making the world better and having fun while doing it. The tool is a B2B data platform to help you accelerate your sales. Elio, you ready to take us to the top? Yeah, sure. All right, data is a you bet. Yeah, I'm glad you're on. Data is a tough space. You know, everyone buys everyone else's data, it seems like, and then like repackages it. Do you have any unique data source you're using? Uh, I would say that um, it's not just data, it's tools that we build on top of data. Uh, so for instance, uh, we use like uh, sources like uh, LinkedIn, Crunchbase, PitchBook. Uh, but what we do is that we build tools on top of them. So for instance, for our customers, we listen to their ideal customer profiles. Um, we model it and then uh, we put like a scoring system on top. So, uh, you know, like uh, the ideal customer pro uh, profile provides the inputs, uh, the data sources uh, provide the output, but they are then scored with our proprietary tools. Hmm, very cool. And so what are customers paying for this on average per month? Uh, most of our customers pay between $2,000 and $6,000 per month. And do they uh, stick? They stick, yeah. We usually have like a three month paid trial um, so that they can, like, you know, we both like uh, see if the model makes sense for them and, like, uh, and, you know, sort of like uh, they can check if the ICP gets uh, matched and then they switch to an annual contract. I would say, like, you know, 90% um, of our uh, three month trial uh, convert to annual. And very cool. We and had very little churn. How many customers today? Today, we have 12 customers, um, and I would say that there are like two groups of customers. One is like um, NASDAQ listed type of technology companies that uh, have like uh, already experienced at scale massive pain points in having their salespeople, uh, you know, search for data on LinkedIn, Crunchbase, and so much that uh, there are stats that says that 60% uh, of salespeople time is spent researching. And so they need to solve this problem at scale, the problem of finding like targeted account and prospect list. Um, and so I would say large tech companies already IPO'd. And then the other group is the Series B type of uh, startup that is already starting to get like obviously product market fit, but most more than that, like uh, they're starting to structure their B2B sales ops. Um, and so those are the two groups that where we're having lots of success, typically tech companies and like uh, companies that sell to, you know, to other enterprises. So can I take those 12 customers times 2000 a month? You're doing about 25 grand a month right now in revenue. It's actually higher than that. Uh, we are doing uh, almost 40K. Okay. 40,000 bucks. So almost half a million dollars a year run rate. That's great. When did you launch the business? We launched uh, last year, early 2020. Okay. And what did you finish last year with in terms of MRR? Last year, it was only like around uh, 9K, I would say. So 9,000 in monthly revenue in December, this past December. Right, right. Wow, this is great growth. I mean, you've almost 4X over the past eight, seven, eight months. Did you bootstrap this or raise capital? Totally bootstrap. That's great. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my co-founder and I have experienced the pain point that we are trying to solve at Scalestack at other companies. Uh, and so, yeah. And did you guys just split equity 50-50? Yeah. That's very nice of you. <laughs> Uh, I, we, you know, like, uh, we feel that, uh, even like growing the company forward, like, you know, transparency and equity in the form of like, you know, being equitable to everybody, uh, are two key values that we want to continue. So like, indeed we are this year, we're looking into profit sharing for our employees. How many employees uh, total? Uh, we have eight people right now. And if you did launch profit sharing, people always wonder, how would you actually structure that? How are you thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, we haven't figured it out yet <laughs> because last year we weren't profitable. But, um, you know, like uh, I would say that uh, I, would, I would create like tiers. This is what I'm thinking. Um, tiers of profit sharing, depending on like, uh, you know, like how long the person has been at the company. So like how long has been able to impact the business and uh -huh. then company performance. Uh, measure by what measure by like you know the metrics that we look at are like uh renewals 
meaning like uh, switching from the trial to the annual contract um, or like extensions or like upselling. Um, so all of those are the um, metrics that we look at. What is churn today? Well, I mean, since uh, inception, I mean, like in having these 12 customers, one customer has left. Uh, and, well, on a uh, revenue basis, though, how much churn is that? That was uh, one of the smallest customers. So what we've learned from that is that um, like uh, companies that are like, uh, you know, C stage to series, series A stage, so they haven't yet hit product market fit are like uh, really tough. Um, yeah, but how much revenue were they paying? A grand a month, two grand a month, more? Yeah, less than two, less than Okay, two. got it. So grand a month is, you know, what you were at that time, like 10, 20 grand. So, okay, interesting. And do you have expansion revenue? And if so, what, what do you upsell metrics to you, like upsell against number of seats, number of leads, something else? Uh, it's a combination of uh, seats for our Chrome extension feature. Um, and then it's uh, like on top of that, it's, uh, you know, different data sources that we can activate for our customers and different APIs to facilitate uh, the injection of the data that we provide into existing workflows. Mm -hmm. The way we look at uh, our product, it's similar to Zapier. So like, you know, we cr they create workflows for simple, like, uh, you know, like uh, processes that people need to do, like, you know, take like... Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. We understand people right. know Zapier. Yeah. Right. So then we do that for B2B sales data. Take like LinkedIn data, uh, enrich it with some of the, uh, you know, pitch book or, um, you know, like Crunchbase, and then like uh, create and add the scoring system. Uh, to see how close um, that company resemble our Got it. ideal customer. Oh, that requires technology. You have eight people on the team. How many are engineers? Three. Three. Okay. Any sales reps? No. We're just no, selling. Just you. Yeah. All right. Good. And um, so, so how do you go from where you are today to, you know, about 100 grand a month or 300 grand a month? Um, well, I mean, like, uh, hundred grand right now, like, uh, seems, uh, you know, within reach, uh, with our current pipeline, um, in the next, uh, I would say six to nine months. Um, and then for the 300, um, I, I think it really depends on, uh, how well we can grow the existing customer basis. Our top customer has like now doubled the size of their like monthly billing. What's your uh, top customer pay per month? Uh, with the renewal, they're now going to pay 7200 a month. Okay, that's great. Yeah, that's really good. Very cool. So what's the next product line here? I mean, th this is something that, you know, people would argue data is a commodity today. You're making money on it right now. But what's the next product line? It's all about like, uh, I mean, tools that you build on top of the data. I agree that data is a commodity. <laughs> and so like, uh, but what you do with that data and how can you integrate that data into existing workflows is where like we see uh, the value that we can generate. I mean, like something as simple as the scoring uh, system is, you know, scoring as in like, is this account close to my ideal customer profile generates tremendous values. A value for our customers because mm -hmm. I mean their salespeople can start targeting from like the highest scoring companies and then go down the list. Yep, yep, totally understand. Well, we're going to watch closely as you go build that. Hopefully, keep scaling, doubling revenue. Any plans to raise capital? You want to stay bootstrapped? Uh, not for now. I mean, uh, eventually, yes, um, but not for now. All right. Uh, I think that uh, we're fine like we are. On that note, Elio, let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, favorite book. Um. Guns, germs, and steel. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Um, I'm studying like uh, like the career of Jeff Bezos. I'm, I'm reading the book that they um, you know recently released. Number um, three, what's your favorite online tool for building the business? Uh, we like Lemlist uh, a lot, so yeah. I would say that. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Six and a half. Okay. And situation, Elio, married, single kids? Married with kids. How many kids? Two, one upcoming in October. Oh, very exciting. And how old are you? I'm 46. 46. Last question. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? Um, 
have more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, there you have it, scalestack.io, helping you understand and uh, get custom B2B data uh, right at your fingertips, your sales team fingertips, so they can be more effective. They went from $9,000 a month, uh, you know, very recently up to now $40,000 a month, uh, about a half million dollar run rate, all bootstrapped 12 customers, team of eight, uh, three engineers. They're not raising. We will see what they do next into our product line. Elio, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers. They try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.